In this series, we've talked about several tank classes so far, namely light tanks, heavy tanks, and tank destroyers. This is dumbing things down a little, but the general idea was that while these tanks weren't really under or overpowered, they were pretty difficult to balance. For anti-air vehicles, that's mostly true as well, except for the first part. Depending on what lens you look at it through, it's fairly debatable. Anti-air vehicles are pretty contentious, especially the closer you get to top tier. If I had to make a guess, I'd say they're likely the most hated vehicle type in the game. It's either them or light tanks. They're usually one of two extremes. Either they're completely overpowered against tanks, or they aren't very useful at all. If you're new to War Thunder, you're probably wondering how that is. It's a vehicle meant to destroy planes. How can it destroy tanks so well? The answer is pretty straightforward. Being able to fire quickly is a huge advantage in War Thunder. It gives you more leeway when you're caught off guard, gives you more opportunities to engage targets, and makes it easier to disable tanks. They do lack penetration, but they make up for it with volume of fire. Turret and gun traverse are also huge factors. The faster your turret can move, the better your reaction time is against threats. If your gun elevation is really fast, it gives quasi-stabilization, which is great for hitting precise weak points. Anti-air vehicles usually have both in spades. In many cases, anti-air vehicles are better TDs than, well, actual TDs. Some examples would be the LV KV-42, ZSU-57-2, and Falcon. Not all AA vehicles are like this, though. In fact, many aren't useful against anything but aircraft and extremely light vehicles. Either they don't have enough penetration, or they don't have enough AP ammo. They can disable tanks, sure, but they can't finish off the target. Some examples would be the M163, Sidearm, and M42. But isn't that how anti-air vehicles should be? No one vehicle should be a master of all trades. The crux of the issue is boredom. There are two scenarios in which someone will use an anti-air vehicle. Either they spawned it at the start of the match, or they spawn it after they die, usually to an aircraft. In either case, things can get pretty boring if there's no aircraft to shoot at, or if you can't kill any tanks. You can try to cap points, but if you can't kill tanks, you can't contest them. You die as soon as someone shows up. This is the balancing conundrum Gaijin faces. There is a very fine line between shredding tanks and being food for them. In the latter case, no one will want to spawn them unless aircraft are already in the air, and at that point, they've usually already killed a few people. By allowing anti-air vehicles to kill tanks, you not only increase their effectiveness against aircraft, but you also keep them from being dead away otherwise. But as stated, they can be extremely powerful against tanks, even if their penetration isn't great. Performance can vary wildly from match to match. Whether an anti-air vehicle stomps or not can come down to BR, obviously, team composition, and of course the map you're probably not going to be getting quad feeds on Red Desert. I say this after getting one on Fire Arc. But hey, like I said, it is very inconsistent. And if that were confusing enough, there's still the other half to that equation, planes. Balancing anti-air against planes is generally a bit more, I don't know, difficult? I'm not sure if that's the right word because, you know, it's not super difficult to kill a plane as long as you're hitting it. So instead of things like penetration and damage being extremely important, you're now looking at stats like muzzle velocity, turret traverse, and max elevation. And of course, when you get towards top tier, things get really messy. Then you're looking at radar, missiles, and proximity ammunition. When it comes to where radar and missile AA should be placed, there is an endless fight going on. Personally, I think they're fine as they are right now. But if spawn point costs for casts are increased, then I would say sure, make SPAA cost more too, or put them a little higher BR-wise. Helicopters and planes are simply too easy to spawn right now. They should be something that can turn the tide of a battle, but is really difficult to spawn. Right now, they're used as an easy tool for revenge. And there's another big problem. You can up to an overpowered anti-air vehicle, but it might perform better after the fact. Tanks don't just get better protected the higher up you go. First-gen MBTs have relatively light armor, so while they would have faster reaction times, they would be more vulnerable. This is why Gaijin relies on user stats so much. I don't fully agree with it, but it is at least understandable. So, what can be done to make anti-air vehicles more balanced? Personally, I like the idea of giving all of them AP belts, but limiting the amount they can carry. Ideally, you could get a decent number of kills if you aim carefully, but if you just spray and pray, maybe you can get one or two. I would also give them light tank spawn point costs. Of course, they would need to be examined on a case-by-case -case basis. Some vehicles aren't really anti-air, but are classed as such by Gaijin. Those could keep as many AP belts as they want. Anti-air vehicles aren't terribly unbalanced right now, they just need some slight adjustments here and there. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I'll see you on the next one.